Hi, I'm Allison Raphael, founder and chief creative officer of Allison Raphael Cosmetics. And today I'm here to talk to you about the basic rules of makeup. And we're starting with foundation. Now, before we go into this, I want to clear up one misconception that's very uh, commonly thought of when thinking about rules. And that is rules are meant to be broken. That's absolutely a false statement. Rules are meant to be mastered. Uh, the difference between both is that when people think rules are meant to be broken, uh, they think that, if, well, if the rules are meant to be broken, there's no reason to learn them. Well, that's not true, because when you don't follow any rules, you wind up with absolute chaos. Um, when you master a rule, however, and you completely understand it, and you completely master um, the technical nuances that go into whatever you're doing, that's when you're able to creatively reinterpret it and creatively change it and bend it and perhaps even break it. Um, and in art, this is what we refer to as creative genius. Now, the best way I can demonstrate this to you is from an example um, I learned long ago from one of my art history classes. Now, this is a portrait um, of an artist's mother that was done when he was about 15 or 16 years old. You can see, obviously, this is a very talented painter, um, somebody who really understands all of the rules of art, of shadow, of light, of color, everything. It's a highly realistic image that he's created of his mother. However, uh, you probably have no idea who this artist is. Most people wouldn't. Uh, but if I show you this later work uh, from this artist, you will most likely recognize it as Pablo Picasso being uh, de Mademoiselle d'Avignon. And forgive my French pronunciation. I speak terrible French. In fact, I don't speak a word of it. Um, now, what has Picasso really done? And that is he has really taken the rules of realism and he's turned them on their head. But he's done so in a way that makes sense. And because it makes sense, and because he's able to rearrange and reinterpret the rules, that's why he's considered a creative genius. Um, so it's not chaos. Even though you may not like this particular painting, or you may not like cubism or surrealism or whatever, that's fine. This is not about aesthetics. It's about really technical ability and, and how far you can take the limits of, um, you know, the rules and how they apply and how you bend them. So there's just a little bit about the rules. Now we're going to start with the rules of foundation, as I promised. Uh, eventually, this is the first of a series, eventually we'll do rules of other things, but because I'm known for complexion, I want to start here. Rule number one is that foundation is not meant to cover major imperfections. I see this mistake being made by women all the time. They don't like their skin, so they just blanket their whole face in foundation. That's not really the way you want to do it. Much better that you keep the, you use your foundation to really even out your skin tone, and then you use concealer to cover your major imperfections. Uh, this is going to give you a much more natural effect um, and, and because the illusion you're really trying to create with makeup is that you have great skin, not that you're wearing a ton of foundation. And the way you do that is by letting foundation do its job of evening out the skin and concealer do its job of covering major imperfections. Foundation should be applied before concealer. Yes, I said that before concealer. The reason why is now years ago, this did not apply because years ago, found, uh, concealer really only came in one very light color and you had to put it on under your foundation and put your foundation over it to make it match, blah, blah, blah. It was a whole big to do. It was very hard to do. Nowadays, concealer comes in colors that are matched to the foundation. So you don't have to worry about using the foundation to correct the color and all of that. The reason why your foundation goes before your concealer is that foundation is blended with these very long strokes and it's really meant to be blended into the skin. It's not meant to sit on top of the skin. Concealer, on the other hand, you know, it's tapped onto the skin. So basically it's meant to sit on top of the skin. And what you want is, what happens is, if you were to put on your concealer first and then your foundation, you're basically going to blend it all away. So remember, foundation first, then concealer. Now rule number three is something I get a lot of questions about all the time. And that is, 
what is the best way to put on your foundation? Is it with a brush? Is it with a sponge? Is it airbrush? Is it with my fingers? Honestly, 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 it does not matter. What matters is that you use the tool that's right for you. Um, so, you know, some people like using a brush and there's different types of brushes. This is a flat brush, this is an angle brush, this is my brush. Um, this is a brush that is used for blending foundation at the very end. Uh, and it's very loose uh, with uh, loose bristles. You can use a sponge, you can use your fingers. If you really love to airbrush, I'm not gonna stop you. But the thing is, everyone has different techniques and different nuances and how they apply their makeup. So what I may use for my technique might not work when you're doing your own makeup. In fact, the way I apply makeup on somebody else is not exactly the way I apply makeup on myself. My best advice on this subject is you need to try different ways of putting your makeup on. And whichever way works best for you, that is the proper way for you to do it. Now, rule number four is how you blend your foundation in. I'm gonna just put my hair up to show you really quickly. Okay. Rule number four, is that when you're blending foundation, you work upwards on the forehead, upwards and outwards, okay? But on the rest of the face, you work in downwards and outward strokes, why? The reason is you have little fine hairs on your face. And if you were to put your foundation on upwards, uh, they're gonna cause the hairs on your face to stand up and you're not gonna get the smoothest finish. By doing it downwards, you make everything lay flat and then you get the best finish. On the other hand though, when you cleanse your face, you use upward strokes because then you're getting all of the product, the cleanser, under those little hairs and getting them off, okay? So foundation got, goes on downwards, cleansing goes upwards. Rule number five. When the correct shade of foundation is applied to the middle of your cheek, when you have no other makeup on, it will visually disappear into your skin. Really, really important. I see people matching foundation to their inner wrist. I see them doing their neck. I see them doing the middle of their nose. No, the best place is always right here, the middle of the cheek. Um, your neck, I've said it a million times, I'll say it again, the lightest part of the body that is exposed to the sun because your chin acts like the visor of a uh, baseball cap. You need to make sure that it's matching right here. This is the largest area that's being covered by the foundation. It needs to match to your cheek. And of course, you need to match it when you don't have any makeup on. And when I say visually disappear, I don't mean that you put a stripe of makeup on and it's gonna suddenly disappear. I mean, you put a stripe of makeup on and you blend it in. And as you blend it in, it starts to disappear. I'm gonna actually do it because I know I match tip to toe. I will do it. Actually, you know what? No, let me not do that. I'm gonna do it on my cheek for you. I'm gonna show you the color I'm wearing right now. I'm a little tan. Normally I'm a skin tone three. Today I'm a skin tone four. I'm gonna show you this. Why not, right? So this is a skin tone four. You see when I put it directly on my cheek. We getting that good? Okay, when you see it directly on my cheek, you see it looks lighter. But as I start to blend it in, okay, you can see it visually just sinking into my skin so you don't see it anymore. That's what you're looking for. Now, apparently, obviously, I have makeup on, but that's what you're looking for when you don't have makeup on. If it comes up orangey, chances are it's too dark um, or has too much pink or red in it. If it comes up light or grayish looking, that's when it's too light. Rule number six follows rule number five, and it is very, very important. That is the face must match the body all the way tip to toe, okay? 
this is important in real life and where you start to see this in, in reality where I see problems is people will put a lot of sunscreen on their face in the summertime and then they'll get their body really tan and then they'll have this white face. Okay, your foundation matches your white face, but your white face doesn't match your body. It looks silly. We call this the moon over Miami look. Um, on TV, uh, if you're working professionally and you're working uh, in television, I often see the opposite happening. Television lights tend to be very, very bright. Um, and so what happens is we have to warm up the face so you don't get total, the, the person's features don't get totally washed out by the light. But by doing so, if we're not careful, we'll make it too warm and you know, next thing you know, your anchor, you have a female anchor and she takes off her jacket and she's sleeveless like I am today. And suddenly she's got this gorgeous, you know, healthy looking face and these white arms or, or worse. Um, and I joke about this all the time uh, when I'm doing makeup up at CNBC. You have a male anchor and he's all, you know, looks healthy and good. And then all of a sudden he'll put his hands on the desk and they're the white hands of death. <laughs> okay. Hands must match the face at all times. In professional circumstances, this often means you need to hit the chest, the, ch the, the uh, neck, the arms if they're exposed. For men, please watch this because this is my big pet peeve. The sides of their neck um, with bronzer. Big thing. In reality, for everyday use, um, this means that you need to make sure that you maybe darken your foundation, you cheat it a shade darker to match it to your body, or you simply warm up your face with a lot of powder bronzer so that you match tip to toe. Now, I'm going to sort of contradict what I just said in rule number seven, which is never use a darker foundation to give you color, okay? You can cheat your foundation one shade darker, as I explained in the last instance. But if on a regular basis, you just feel like you look pale or you look sallow or you're not looking your best, don't go darkening your foundation. That's just going to make you look muddy. Um, what you want to do is use powdered bronzer or use, um, use blush. That's their job, is to brighten the face and to give it life. Um, foundation, like I said, it's just meant to... to um, to unify the skin tone. It has to do with the way the makeups lay on the skin that going too dark with your foundation will make you look muddy. Um, like I said, foundation sinks into the skin. So it, it, it reflects differently than if you were to use a powder bronzer or a cream bronzer or a cream blush. It, it's, more, it's more up on the skin and it reflects light differently so it looks more natural. Remember, keep your foundation basically the same tone as your actual skin tone. Rule number eight is a really important one to keep in mind as well, particularly when people shop on the internet. You can't really judge a foundation by its format, meaning you can't assume that because it's a liquid, it's going to be sheer, or because it's a solid, it's going to be more coverage. You have to really read the description and you have to, if you can, try it on. There are, you know, I've seen compact foundations, you know, cream ones that are extremely sheer like a tinted moisturizer, and I've seen liquid foundations that are as heavy as heavy can be. Um, my foundation that I make is really, this is, and it says right on the back, it's a medium coverage satin finish. You're looking for the level of coverage and the level of finish. That's what's really going to tell you how the foundation is going to wear on your skin. Um, also, when it comes to color, you really, it's best if you can try a foundation on and not judge it by what's known as this mask tone, what it just looks like in a clear jar. Um, because a lot of foundations, when they dry down, they change color a little bit. So you really want to try to try it on your skin and you really need to know um, what that foundation is going to do on your skin. Also, what looks great on your friend may not look great on you. Uh, you have different skin. So the best thing is always to try it. The next uh, section I want to talk about now is 
bending the rules or adapting the rules or once you've mastered the rules, uh, some cool ways you can actually fudge them a little bit uh, to give you different effects. And this is what we do as professional makeup artists. Now the first way we can start to bend the rules when it comes to foundation is by adjusting the level of coverage um, either much more or much less than uh, you would normally use. This is why, and this is what we do as professional makeup artists. When you really over cover the skin and you give it a perfectly, perfectly flawless finish, that's when the, the effect or the visual effect to the viewer makes it look very, very glamorous. Um, that's when you're doing red carpet makeup. That's when you have special event makeup. That's when you, you over cover in the foundation. Um, so it's more than natural, it's better than natural. That's a very glamorous, a very beautiful effect, but you don't wanna do that every day because then it looks out of place. Going in the other direction, if you use a lot less foundation than you normally would, um, for a red carpet event, and let's say you do really smoky eyes, that's when you start to get a much edgier, a much more rock and roll look. And I talk about this in my smoky eye video. Um, you know, working with photographers, you don't do this so much in everyday life, but working with photographers, uh, they always are looking for the pictures to be uh, more emotionally raw, more edgy, more dangerous looking. <laughs> and, and by actually using less foundation and making the model or the person look less glamorous, you get that sort of edgy raw effect. Okay, the second way we can bend the rules a little bit with, uh, with foundation is for women with rosacea, if they have very, very red inflamed cheeks or if somebody has a very red inflamed blemish, you can sheet the foundation in those areas alone one shade darker, and I'll explain why. This is basically color correction is what you're doing. Um, beige is here on the color scale, red way over here. By using a foundation with more yellow on top of redness, what you're actually doing is the yellow mixes with the red and it comes to brown. Beige is here, brown is here, red is here. So what happens is when somebody's looking at you, the eye doesn't jump to the red area. It's going to skim over the brown area because you've made it brown. It's like freckles. You don't notice a freckle as much as a blemish, right? Because it doesn't jump out as visual, visually as much. Um, this is the same thing you're doing when you're cheating that foundation darker on the redness. You're toning down the redness. You're making it look more brown or tan. That way, it's not as visually distinctive to the viewer. The third way we can bend the rules here uh, with our foundation is by using a foundation two shades darker than your normal skin tone as a bronzer. Um, you know, bronzer is simply supposed to give the illusion of a tan or, you know, that you've been kissed by the sun. Um, you can do this very easily with a liquid foundation. In fact, most times it's what I use as bronzer is a liquid foundation. Um, you just want to make sure if you have a range of foundations, you just want to make sure you're, you know, you're not really differing in the undertones of the foundation. So, for example, since my line, all of the, the range is the same undertone. This is a six, I'll just show it to you a little bit, blend it into my hand. It's not necessarily a different color than my skin tone. No, you can see that. It's simply, it's the same color, just a deeper shade. Um, and that's how we cheat and create bronzers with foundations. The trick to doing this, however, is not to do it all over the face, and I've said that a million times before. The trick to this uh, rule bending is to do it just on the cheekbones and where the sun would hit your face, very much like a bronzer. In that way, it's gonna look very natural, almost like a cream blush. The 
fourth way we can bend the rules is how we blend our foundation. Now, I talked about the foundation being really worked into the skin, you know, with upwards and downwards and outward strokes. However, by tapping the foundation onto the skin, by not really blending it into the skin, you can create coverage. And this is great to do if you have a blemish, if you have an area um, of uh, darkness that you want to cover and you want to make it look really natural. Tapping the foundation to the skin is a, is a technique known as stippling. And this is how you get really high coverage. You can get really high coverage with a product that's just a medium coverage product normally. I hope these uh, rules and explanations were helpful to you in your pursuit of makeup artistry. If you have a great rule that I somehow missed, or if you have a way to bend the rule that I didn't discuss and you'd like to share with us, please leave me your comments at the bottom. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.